Hello, it's Marco Matorsovic here with Reillusion, and in this video, we're going to be using Character Creator 3, exporting the character into iClone, applying some of the motion capture data, and then exporting it into Blender. So here we've already got our character. He is looking fantastic. So this is using Character Creator 3.3. Now, if I want to send this character to iClone, all I have to do is go File, export, send character to iClone. And just like that, the character begins to import. And here we have him in our scene. He is looking fantastic. Let me just make that window a little bit bigger. And he just looks stunning. So let's now go over into content and we'll click on motion up the top. And I'm gonna come down to this uh, CC mix move mail. From here, I'm gonna go down to, let's just go a walk. So let me just find our walk cycle. Here we go. So we got walk start. Now to apply this motion, let's make our cursor all the way at frame one. I'm gonna click and drag and place it on the character. And we can see as we scrub through, he begins walking. So that's pretty cool. Now the one thing as well to keep in mind that he actually moves off his origin. So the character's actually all the way back here. So normally what would happen is if we scrub to the end, which is about here-ish, let me just zoom in with holding alt. So we put the cursor on our last frame and then we click and drag walk end and put it over the top there. Now what should happen is that this walk cycle should start back from the origin, but iClone have got it set up so that it continues on its path. Now I'll show you what I mean by this when we come into Blender. What I'll do is I'll export both animations by themselves and then we'll combine them together. But for now we've got this walk cycle where he starts walking, walks to the end, and then has a stop. That's pretty cool. Now, let me just show you what we'll do is we'll go to the end frame. So this is our end frame. Current frame is 985. So now we're gonna export this animation. So let's go file, export, FBX. With the presets, I will normally select Blender because we're using Blender. I would go 30 frames a second. Let's go range. We know that it goes from range, uh, from frame one to frame 985. Now embedded textures, I normally untick this because I don't like the FBX to have all the textures within the model. I like to have them separately. From here, I'm gonna leave everything else as is and then I'm gonna press export. Let's just save it in place. This will be full walk and I'm gonna click save. And there we have it, now that's been exported. Let's jump over into Blender. So here we are in Blender 2.9. Now the first things to notice if we come over into the render settings, sorry, into the output properties, we can see our frame rate is 24 frames a second. Now we exported that character at 30 frames a second. If I now go file, import, FBX, all I'm gonna do is just double click on the character and we should see that the frames per second will update. And then we go, we've updated to 30 frames a second and we've got our character in. So if I just delete the default cube and then press play, we can see that we've got a walk cycle. How cool is that? very quickly, very simply. Now, this is what I was talking about earlier is our origin point is still all the way here, our root bone. So if I just increase this to a thousand frames and we'll make the timeline a little bit bigger and we scrub through, we can see that it walks all the way to the end. Now, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back into iClone and what I'm gonna do is now export these individual mocap files. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete this end walk, or sorry, walk end. Let's go delete on that one. Let's export this one. So I'm gonna go file, export, FBX. Current frame is one. And the end frame I know is 511. So I'm gonna press export. Let's just put it under start walk and save. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete our walk cycle and we should see that it pops all the way back. Boop. And then from here, what I'm gonna do is apply our walk end. And we can see that he starts all the way back here. Now, if you remember, he was actually, the end cycle was starting here. So let's now export this. Let's find that end frame, probably about 474. File, export, FBX, range, 474, export. And we will call this end walk, save. Now let's jump back into Blender. I'm gonna leave this character in here, just an example. But what I might do is just move him over a smidgen. There we go. And so we still got him over there. Now I need to import two FBXs. So let's go file, import FBX. We've got our end walk and we've got start walk. 
So let's now ex uh, sorry import them both. And here we've got our two characters. So if we go back to the start, we can see that one's walking and then we'll stop. And then the other one keeps walking. And then that walk cycle finishes. Now we only need one character. However, to make life easier, we're gonna update the name of the action. So from here, I'm gonna select the animation tab and let's go into object mode. So I'm gonna come up here and select the editor type and go into the non-linear animation. I really like having this view here. So what I can do here is select the drop down and push the actions down. So we've got individual actions and I'm gonna select this character here. Now, what is his walk? So he's, go he's probably the start walk. All right. So from here, let's change the dope sheet to the action editor. So let's just select the armature. There we go. That's the one we want. We know that it's going to be armature 002. Here we go. And so if I come in here, select our line and press tab, we can go into edit mode and I'm going to rename this action to start walk, actually probably walk start. And then if I press tab, unfortunately this one doesn't update, but what I can do now is I'm just going to delete it. And then I'm also going to select this character here by right clicking, select hierarchy. So it selects everything under the armature and delete. So what remains is this guy just walking and then coming to an end up here in the NLA editor. Let's rename this action as well while we're here. So I'm just going to select our bone tab to go into edit mode and we'll call this walk end just to make our life a little bit easier. So from here, I'm going to delete that action. And I'm going to select our track. Let's go shift a to add in a new track. I'm going to type in walk and start. So now we've kind of got him walking. And so this is kind of our action. So if we go back to iClone, it's the exact same thing down here. We're just working with timelines. Now, if I want to add in another action, I can go shift a again, and we'll type in walk and select end. And then I can push it back. Whoops. And then I can select our end and push it all the way to the end there. So they meet up. And now this is what I was talking about. So he walks and then we'll snap back. Now, how do we fix this? This is the next thing. I'm going to go from the very last frame here. Let's go tab into edit mode and let's zoom all the way in on the action. So we're on our last frame. I'm going to come up here into pose mode. And what I want to find is the hip bone. So the relationship goes root bone and then hip bone. Now, if I actually want to see the whole armature, I can come over here into the armature settings, viewport display, and we select in front. There we go. So now I can see the whole bone structure. I want to just find the hip bone, which I think might be this one here. That's waist. That's pelvis. Ah, oh, I was clicking the wrong spot. The hips all the way down here. So what I want to do now is I want to copy that information there. So what I'm going to do here is on the dope sheet, I'm just going to press control C to copy that location. Let's press tab to go back into the, to turn off edit mode. I'm going to select walk end and then press tab again. From here, what I'm going to do is I've still got the hip bone selected. I'm just going to press control V and that's going to move the character to its location. However, if I move it to the next frame, he'll pop back. So to understand this, I'm going to go up here to the editor type and change that to the graph editor. Still with the hip bone selected, this is all the information on our hip bone. Now, what I will do is we can see that this orange line, let's have a look. What is the orange line? Well, we don't need to view the rotation or the scale. We just care about the location at the moment. So we can see that the red line here is our X axis. So we can see that this is where it starts. Sorry. This is where we can see that this point here on this frame was where the last animation ended. So we need to bring everything else up. What I'm going to do from here is hide our Y location and our Z location. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to press B for box select and then middle mouse to deselect that vertice or sorry, that keyframe. What I'm going to do now is press G to move and then I'm going to press Y to move it up. Now let's just scroll in and we're going to use a bit of guesstimation here, G or Y. And we can see that we kind of have this line that goes up. So we're going to kind of try and match that curve. And so now if I were to move from here, that's the X axis. So he's no longer moving left and right. 
well, he'll, sorry, he'll be in line with left and right, but the Y value is more what we're concerned about. So let's go into Y location of the hip. Let's select everything like we did with A, B to box select, and then middle mouse to deselect. And let's line this one up as well. So I think that's quite nice there. And we'll see that it still didn't change much because it's not the Y axis. Even though we've got our green line and we've got this all green graph here. So now he's gonna have that consistent of X and Y movement. Now, obviously the character is set up for Z axis to be forward, my mistake. But if I go, if I turn off Y and go Z and we zoom out, whoa, we can see how far out we've got to go. So let's press the period key on the numpad. So let's select everything with A and then press the period key on the numpad. And we can see that this is our kind of movement. So this is how he moves forward. But we can see that the first frame, which is the last frame from the previous walk cycle is all the way up here. So let's now move everything. B to box select, middle mouse button to deselect. Let's go GY. You can see that he's already moved up. And then I'm gonna kind of guesstimate the flow, GY. Something like that. And then we have him walking. Now let's change the graph editor back to the nonlinear animation. Let's press tab to close this. And now what we're gonna have is if we scroll through, we have him walking. So this is why I really recommend doing all this within iClone because it just gets rid of all that shenanigans.